Hey there, everybody. It has been about a week since I did a conscious talk. I can't believe that a week went by. So much has happened over this week, and yet I feel like nothing really has happened. I feel like it's just been kind of one of those weeks. Um, everywhere and where from kind of feeling under the weather to needing some massive grounding after a really big event that I held with Max at Ancient Crystal Skull last week to kids and the hustle and bustle and coming off of a trip and getting resettled and just all of this stuff going on. And it has definitely been just one of those weeks. And here I am today. It is absolutely lovely outside. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. The breeze is blowing. It is just a beautiful, beautiful day. And I've spent all day with my kids well, with a child at Legoland, um, chaperoning a field trip today. So it's been a good day. It's been a really, really good day. And as I went through my day, of course, work does not stop for any of those events in life. It just kind of continues on. And I did a couple calls with some people today and have been, um, looking at some of the emails that have come in over the course of the week, working with different clients. And I guess the running theme of the week, little did I know because I know because for the entire, uh, not, not uh, looking at email or Facebook or social media of any sorts. But as I came on to my email and looking at different things that are going on with my clients, which is where conscious coffee often comes from, right? Or things in my own life. Um, I saw all of this talk in my, my people's work around neediness, neediness. And they, you know, some of the stuff that I have given them in journal prompts and in exercises and the beautiful, beautiful people that I've been working with. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to just, instead of answering everybody back with solo emails and solo responses, I'm going to just, just come right here and I'm going to create this because it's obviously the energy of the week. So here we go. Energy of the week. Neediness prevents us from fully receiving love. Neediness prevents us from fully receiving love. You know, I am one of those people that I am crappy at doing neediness. And I mean that by when somebody gets needy with me, you'll see me restrict myself from them. I will just completely just like whoop, back away, back away from the hot fire of neediness because it feels so energy sucking and mm -hmm. depriving of, of all parties involved that it's it just definitely has that restriction energy to it. You know, I was talking to my ex-husband the other day and um, he was over and we had breakfast together and was talking about kids and about relationship and about a whole bunch of different stuff. And he told me, he said, you know, you know, Kendall, it took me, it took me a good six or seven years to get over my neediness for you over my neediness for our relationship. And I just was like, what the heck are you talking about? You know, like, I don't understand this. There need things. Don't get me wrong. I need things. I need air. I need food. I need connection. I need, you know, I do need love. I need uh, freedom. I need, I need to be able to feel my own creative flow. I need to, you know, feel good in my own body. I need to have, I need to have, um, I don't want any, I need to have, um, a good spiritual alignment and to feel connected to God's source energy. Uh, and then I go, what else do I need? You know, like what else do I need? Is anything else that I really truly need? And often what we have in relationship is that we have this thing that in order to be fill in the blank, I need whatever it is in order to, f to have this feeling in order to feel fulfilled, in order to feel lovable, in order to feel loved, in order to feel worthy, in order to feel complete, in order to feel, um, connection with people, intimacy, in order to feel whatever we're wanting in life, we think that it's going, we're going to gain it from something. So here's the thing. It's not that we don't need this. We need all of that and more. 
okay? And there's absolutely zero wrong with need because we are human beings and we need things. I mean, if we did go without air for about four minutes, we're probably going to really be in a bad situation, right? We go without water for about three days, we're going to be in a really bad situation. We go without food for, you know, anywhere for about 10 days and well, we're going to be in a really bad situation. We go without physical touch in our lives, you know, for a long period of time that starts messing with our emotions. It starts messing with our health. It messes with our ability to socialize. It messes with us in so many different ways. So we need these things. We need air. We need food. We need contact physically contact, emotional contact, mental contact, need community. Even those people who say that they don't do. Okay. So we have needs and there's nothing wrong with needs, but here's where it all gets fucked up. It all gets fucked up and we restrict our love by number one, need this stuff. Uh, at a level to make us anything, okay? We today we do need air, we do need food, and we do need water. Outside of that, we can survive. We can we can pretty much survive with. I'm drinking wine, by the way, because I had to deal with about a uh, hundred first graders today. So I decided I did. I came home. I did all my work. I needed a glass of wine. Um, so it should be like conscious wine, but, um, so yeah, so we do need those things outside of those primary things to keep us alive. We can survive without anything else. Okay. We can survive without shelter. We can survive without clothes. We can survive without physical contact. We can survive without community. We can, we can survive without just bring the vacuum back, please. <laughs> My 14, my daughter lives right next door and my 14 year old son just walked past with the vacuum to go to his sister's house. I guess he's doing chores for her. Um, so we can survive with all of, without all of this stuff, but we get into this mindset that we actually need it. And here's where we really, really restrict our love. We restrict our love because we get this idea around need and then we believe, we go into our ego, we go into our pain body and we believe that somebody else is to provide it to us. And that if they are not seeing that we need it, if they're not, maybe they're just not capable of giving it. Maybe, maybe they just don't give a shit enough to give it. I don't know. There's a million and one reasons, right? But we don't get it from somebody. So then we go, well, they don't love me. I'm not worried. Thee. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm going to make sure though that they know that I need it. I am going to make sure that they really truly know that I need it. And we become like what? The spoiled rotten little three-year-old that, or maybe some of those first graders I just got done dealing with who needed probably something more than what I was willing to offer them in the moment. They needed me to have patience with them, <laughs> which I did. But, um, but you know, they, we, we throw this fit of manipulation. We throw this fit of pity. We throw this fit of poor me, feel bad for me. I'm over here with something Okay, that I don't, I, I, I'm empty, I'm scarce, I don't have fulfillment, I don't, I don't, I don't. And we're really restricting the love because we're so focused on not having the love. And we're so focused on handing our power away in this moment. We hand it away because we hand it over to anybody or anything else by saying, well, you're supposed to take care of that. If you really give a shit about me, then you would take care of that. If you really did that, then you would really, you know, like if you really cared, you really truly cared if you loved me then you would see my need it's not up to anybody else to fix us it's not up to anybody else to fulfill us we get fulfilled when we figure out how to be happy with inside ourselves we get 
love comes flowing freely to us and in mass quantities when we feel so much love inside ourselves, when we're not focused on the scarcity of love. And I'm going to pick on love because obviously it's in the title. So I'm picking on love here. But you know what? That You could say money. You could say health. You could say intimacy. You could say sex. You could put, change out love for anything that you are feeling scarcity around. In this moment, we're going to talk love. We get so focused on the kind of love that we want and from the sources that we want it. And we basically say, okay, it is up to this person to provide me with this kind of love. And it is up to this person to provide me with this kind of love. And it is up to this person to provide me for this kind of love. And if these three people do exactly as I say and provide the love that I want and show it, make it show up exactly how I want, then I will feel loved. Then I will feel happy. Then I will feel fulfilled. But damn it, they don't do it. Matter of fact, the more I show my need, the more they move away from me. And here's the thing. People move away from needy people because of the scarcity mindset. Okay? This is all about scarcity mindset. Law of attraction, foundation, it comes down to the basis. And what it comes down to is when we see that we are lacking and we get focused on the problem of lacking and we try to fix the problem of lacking in whatever it is, fill in the blank, with the same energy of lacking, there's no way in fucking hell we can ever get what we're actually going for. We can manipulate it for a temporary amount of time. We can, you know, really b cause all of the people to feel guilty. We can put shame on people. We can do all of that. But there's only so much of that that anybody will take before they go, yeah, I'm done. I'm burned out. I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm irritated. There's bitterness. There's resentment. There's all this kind of stuff coming up because a needy person will remain needy and hungry for as long as they so choose to not find it with inside themselves for as long as the time that they choose to limit their own potential to love, their own potential to fulfillment, their own potential to having everything that they want come to them in massive amounts because they're focused on the scarcity. And when we focus on the scarcity of anything, we get more of that. And we cause whatever we are wanting to actually go away from us. We push it away because we're so focused on the not having of it. It's funny when we actually look out into the world, you know, my, I, a couple years ago, I journaled in my, in my daily journal. Uh, my very first prompt in my daily journal was, I don't know how, but it just is that I have all the love that I want and need. And then I think I also switch it to, I don't know how, but it just is that I have all the love that I desire. And you see that I, I do these prompts like that because it is a very opening. I don't know how, I don't know where it's coming from. I'm not trying to dictate it. Okay. I may, I'm, I'm opening it up to however God universe, my soul wants to bring it to me in this lifetime. So I don't know how, but it just is. I'm claiming it in certainty in that statement. I'm not controlling it. I'm claiming it in certainty. I don't know how, but it just is that I have all the love that I desire. And a couple of years ago, I did that and I was writing it down every single day and it did not take very long that all of a sudden love just started to show up in my life in all these massive ways and little ways. And it just was coming about. It was so beautiful, but it became almost overwhelming because I had all of these people now in my life demanding from me time and energy and connection. And it wasn't enough of me to go around. And so I took that prompt off the top of my page. I actually stopped writing it. And I was just like, okay, I've got now all the love that I desire. And then some more than enough with plenty left over on the love on the love boat here. And, you know, and I still have that it's still this overwhelming amount of love, overwhelming amount of connection. But here's the thing. It wasn't the prompt that created it. It wasn't my focus on wanting the love. 
It was my focus on that I already had it. I had it with inside myself. I had to find it with inside myself. I had to come back to me and I had to truly fall in love with me, with the body that I have, that I had, with the life that I had created thus far, with its quirks and its challenges, with its beauty and with its painful spots. I had to love it all. And when I loved it all and I loved all of me, all of a sudden, this love just started just, you know, just overwhelming amounts flowing in. And that's a beautiful space to be in. But it got created not from the focusing of the scarcity, because right about that time, here's the thing, two years ago, I went through, I was in an open relationship with two men and they were long-term relationships, seven, eight years long. And, you know, I loved each of these men deeply. And within about six months of each other, both of the relationships ended. One ended with physical violence and one ended with a gut-wrenching seven, seven sentence email of telling me how wonderful I was, but to never speak again to him. And so it was like a dagger in the chest. And six months later, I found myself physically being hurt by the other to the point that my whole world flipped upside down. My whole world had to shift. And I could have in that moment looked at that situation and gone, nobody loves me. I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm just a piece of trash. Both of these men just threw me away like a piece of trash. Just, you know, I'm done with her. She's gone. She's done. Old news. Moving on. I could have looked at that like that. I could have believed that. And there was pieces of me in that moment. Don't let me mislead you here at all. There were pieces of me in that moment that truly felt that way. But there were more pieces of me that knew that that wasn't accurate. That wasn't true. I was worthy of love. Both these men were worthy of love. This was ego. This was fear. This was a whole bunch of other stuff. And, and we were no longer in alignment. Life was taking us in different ways because we were no longer in alignment. It wasn't a lack of worthiness or a lack of worthiness to love or to connection or to intimacy or to relationship or to anything. It was alignment changing. And we had to move our separate ways. Was it fun? Fuck no. It was not fun. But I chose to focus in on the, on the fact that I was still worthy of love, that I was still worthy of connection, and that I had it all in myself, that I could love myself, that I could, I could, I was offering worthiness to the world, to God. I was, I was worthy. I was born. I got air in my lungs, blood flowing through my veins. And I came back to the statement that God does not make unworthy things. And that's just such a beautiful quote to me. And then I always come back to it because God does not make unworthy things and we are all lovable, but we have to find the love with inside ourselves and focus on the, that love and expand it out and grow it so that we are just this beaming ball of love. And when we are a beaming ball of love, all of a sudden, massive amounts of love flows to us. When we are acting in need, we restrict our light. When we are acting in need, we are acting from a place of ego. We are acting from a place of victimhood and we are turning all of our power over to others. So I guess what I want to leave you with today is the thought of how am I, not I, but how are you, how are you restricting your love to self? How are you restricting your personal power? Where are you stepping into victimhood right now by focusing on the scarcity of love that you have and by demanding it to come from outside sources or labeling what sources it's supposed to come from instead of opening yourself up to the greatness of everything that the world has to offer you, everything that your soul wants for you. That negative feeling of neediness, that piss poor feeling of I'm not worthy. And when you get into the victim mode of that, when you're really feeling it, it's because you're out of alignment with your core, with who you really truly are. Your soul does not feel the same way that you're feeling right now. That is a, that is a separation between you in this moment 
and where you, what your soul truly knows. That God essence that resides inside each one of us. It knows. It knows that you're worthy. It knows that you're full of love. It knows all of this beautiful stuff. And when we get out of alignment with it, then we feel, ugh. We feel constriction. We feel victimy. We feel lost. We feel alone. We feel sad. We feel needy. We feel scarcity. And I want you to start to look at this. And I want you to look at when I feel needy, I'm actually focusing on scarcity. And when I feel scarcity, I'm actually constricting my light and I'm preventing myself from drawing in all the abundance in any given subject of my life that I really wanted in. So where are you? restricting your love? Where are you restricting your power? How are you showing up needy in your life? And how can you focus in on really tapping into it with yourself? Really changing those thoughts. Feel free to steal my journal prompt. Please do. Make it your homework for the next 30 days to start writing out 10 journal prompts with, I don't know how, but it just is. I don't know how, but it just is. I have all the love that I desire. I don't know how, but it just is. I have more than enough with plenty left over. I don't know how, but it just is. I wake up every morning feeling fulfilled and excited. I don't know how, but it just is. Everything that I want comes to me with ease. Start there and add some more to that. Mm. I can't see my phone. I know that I can kind of see that somebody's text written something down here. Oh, hey, Steve. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Addison. I didn't even know who was on here. Radiate your love so powerful that others feel it and see it. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. So true. So, so true. You can always tell what you're feeling and what you're thinking by what's showing up in your life. We live in an attraction-based world. And you can say a whole bunch of stuff, but if you don't believe it at your core, you're going to know it by what's showing up. You're going to know it by how your life is unveiling itself to you. So don't get lost Mm. in the words that you write and the words that you speak and the actions that you're taking, because sometimes those aren't in alignment with your truth of where you're at in the moment. If you want to shift through your world and what's going on in it, if you really want to call in that beauty, that greatness of everything, then the first place to start is right with your core, with your heart, getting right with with the crap that's there. Allow yourself to feel sad about stuff. You've got to venture into those lands that are kind of uncomfortable. In the uncomfort is where the magic happens. It's where we make miracles happen. And sometimes we have to unveil our darkest our darkest parts of self in order to find our light. Because if we don't shine the light into the darkness, then we don't know what's going to come up and sabotage us when we least expect it. And I know a lot of the times I deal so much, thousands and thousands of people at this point in my career. And over and over again, I hear that, you know, people say to me, I'm doing the work. I'm doing the work and I get it. I, I, I do the work and sometimes I get the results and sometimes I don't. And here's what's going on. I'm doing the work is just that. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm taking action. I'm showing up. I'm doing all the physical actions. I, you know, I'm speaking the lingo. I'm walking the walk, but I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I just don't love myself. I look in the mirror and I I tell myself that I love myself, but I'm not yet catching that background voice that's going, <laughs> oh man, yeah, no, you're pathetic. No, if you've got that mean girl syndrome or that mean guy syndrome running in the back of your head that's just self-sabotaging and beating the shit out of you, You've got to go in and you've got to deal with that first. You have to deal with it first because you're never going to be able to really truly achieve what you're wanting as long as you're listening to those background programs, as long as you're listening to those falsities. Your soul 
It's love. Your soul is love. It is abundance. It is light. It is forward moving. It is positive. It does not focus on scarcity. It does not focus on your past failures. It does not focus on the things that you do not have. It focuses on everything that you truly are, which is abundance, which is love. And you've got to really become witness to that stuff so that you can go, that's a bunch of bullshit. Thank you for speaking up, but that's a bunch of bullshit. You can have those talks with self and you can work yourself out of that. So doing the real work is learning how to love yourself. Doing the real work is learning how to get right with your authentic moments in calling bullshit on yourself, pulling out the doubt, pulling out the, the, the crap that's there and fighting it, saying, hey, that's not accurate. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am abundant. I can have what I want. So, so much beautiful work to be done. If your life is not lining up the way you want, if you are looking out into this world from a place of scarcity, from a place of neediness, from a place of emptiness, lostness, loneliness, then maybe this message was for you. As I think it was for very, uh, quite a few people in my inbox today, um, which we'll be getting this in newsletter form. So there you have it. You see, I did this just for you. You know who you are. I love you. And yeah, for everybody else, if this made you think of somebody, if you've lived in neediness before, then you probably feel it. You probably feel this message. Send this to somebody who actually needs it and help them move through their neediness, help them move through their scarcity thinking and claim the life that they were born to live, a life of beauty, a life of abundance. As far as events that are going on, um, I've got local events up. I've got some beautiful uh, things coming about. I'm really not even going to announce anything right now. I don't feel really called in alignment to any of that right this very second. So I will just say that if anybody wants any further help on moving through neediness, clearing out scarcity thinking, to message me in the messages below in the comments, private message me, email me, text me, call me, however you need to connect with me. I'm pretty easy to find. I am here to help you move through this kind of shit and claim the life that you were born to live. As always, stop existing, start living, and I will catch you tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee. Bye, everybody.